Of the week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Zoe Lyons and Russell Howard, Sean Walsh, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a typical picture of Peter Mandelson. But what does MBAL stand for? Is it Mandelson blatantly a lizard? <laughs> Is it my briefs? Ah, uh, leather. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it everything he enjoys? Is it muckraking, bullshitting yeah. and leaving? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually his nicknames for uh, Brown and Blair. It's Man Boobs and Lady Boy. <laughs> <laughs> is it just a list of his favourite things? Is it millionaires, billionaires, aristocrats and lords? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it Mandelson Burns adorable Labradors? <laughs> He's not actually doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Is it just simply <laughs> Mr. Bond at last? <laughs> I know what this is. It's what he requested on Desert Island Discs. It was Michael Bublé and lubrication. <laughs> <laughs> How gutted would he be if lubrication were like a jazz band? <laughs> <laughs> it, I reckon it, it's Mykonos, booked already, love. <laughs> Mandelson burns a leprechaun? <laughs> Certainly not. Sorry, sir. Uh... <laughs> I look out for you all. I look out for you all. <laughs> no one will be burning you on my watch. <laughs> oh no, I've slipped into a yeah, stereotype. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I'd like to apologise to the people of Ireland. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, the correct answer is. Mandelson's book, Angus Labour. Congratulations, very good. Well done. Yes, the answer I was looking for was Mandelson's book, Anger's Labour. This is a story that Lord Mandelson's newly published memoirs have rocked the Labour Party by revealing how little faith the Cabinet had in Gordon Brown and by revisiting the war between Blair and Brown. But the thing is, like, have, you, have you read any of it? We were promised juicy gossip. That's what he said. What was the first revelation? Brown and Blair don't get on. Really? <laughs> The, we want juicy details. What I want to know is how mad was Brown towards the end of the election? I bet you there was one day where they found him in his room, surrounded by dead weasels, and he was just <laughs> dressed as Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> The first members the of the, the Labour Party said they were going to try and stop him publishing his memoirs, but of course the only way to stop Mandelson is a little bit of garlic and a steak <laughs> through the heart. <laughs> that man is so oily that if he went for a swim in the Atlantic, BP would be off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. Mandelson appears to be dressed as the compare the meerkat for some reason. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is the, uh, the, the, the notion that he, he advertised them. They were, were serialised in the Times and the advertising for it. Pitched as a fairy tale, there were these two mighty kings mm -hmm. and then an evil... Who are we yeah. in this situation? <laughs> are we the villagers uh, in this story? <laughs> I am Shrek, I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm an idiot, I know where I fit in the, in the, in the fairy tale scheme. Oh, it's weird to think he's the son of Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Granddad, <laughs> we love you. Well, it's funny, really difficult to take seriously because that bit, I don't know if you've seen the advert, but he says, Are you sitting comfortably? And the trouble is, I was thinking, my mate Tom at school, so he's about seven, and the teacher went, Are you sitting comfortably? He went, Not really, miss, I've got worms. <laughs> <laughs> What do we find out about the, about the coalition negotiations, though? I mean, let's, let's you know, there were, you know, there were some revelations. There was, oh, we yeah, found Clegg out, was we found out apparently that Clegg told Brown he had to go. Yes. But it hasn't done Clegg any favours, is it? He's now more unpopular than he's ever been. He couldn't have been more unpopular if he'd formed a coalition with North Korea, Fabio Capello <laughs> and Piers Morgan. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it was Clegg was the executioner. Clegg went to the meeting and told Brown, I, you have to go. And Brown said, I will only stay for a year. Then he said, I'll go in October. Uh, then he said, I'll just hang around for the uh, transition until we get a new leader. It was literally short of the point where we're going, go! And he's going, I, you'll not notice me. Yeah. I'll just be in the corner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't, don't make me go, no, I'll just hover. I'll be going, mm, sh mm. You're the, I'm, I'm not even here. I'm not even here. <laughs> What we wanted to know is what pranks did Brown leave behind? Because you would totally mess around. If cameras coming in, like, right, cling foam over every toilet seat, <laughs> change all the phone numbers to sex lines, put some prawns in the curtains, everyone stand back, I'm going to curl one out on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, you wouldn't, that's the first thing I'd do. <laughs> all the others are pranks. Yeah. All the others are like, no. <laughs> pooing on the desk is not a prank. <laughs> You are massively reducing your chances of ever selling a house. <laughs> <laughs> Which senior conservative has come under attack this week? It is Michael Gove. Yeah. It is Michael Gove. Yeah. Delightful. He's, he's a very weird looking man. <laughs> he looks to me like a cross between Skeletor, E.T., and Stewie from The Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> come out and you'd expect him to go around the room going <laughs> he's basically uh, produced a list of schools that are actually going to lose their buildings or they mm. aren't going to have new buildings yeah. built and uh, turned out it had 25 mistakes on it now as the education <laughs> secretary i think he should write that list out 100 <laughs> times <laughs> until he gets it right How has David Cameron irritated teachers this week? Uh, because he said that he's terrified of state schools. He's terrified yes. of sending his kids to state, which is fair enough, because if uh, Michael Gove carries on the way he is, quite a lot of them are going to be structurally quite dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> what he needs to do is to get Nick Clegg's son at the same school as his son, and then uh, David Cameron's son would have a little servant. <laughs> didn't they, that apparently only 18 teachers in the last 40 years have actually been sacked. And you're thinking, well, that's an amazing thing. They'll have to change that saying, won't they? You know, those who can do, those who can't teach, and those who can't teach, they teach as well. <laughs> But what is this week? A woman from, uh, from Ofsted uh, let slip that she thinks it's an excellent thing for bad oh, this teachers. is incredible. That's right, she said, didn't she, that every school needs one shit teacher. <laughs> and you're thinking, if that's the case, we have got a lot of schools that are centres for excellence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the she phrase, it was a, uh, an Ofsted woman called Zena Atkins of Ofsted, who said, who's quoted in the Sunday Times as saying, one really good thing about primary school is that every kid learns to deal with a really shit teacher. <laughs> so, adding, Every grown-up in a workplace needs to learn to deal with the moron who sits four desks down. <laughs> yeah, so it's the first time that people can get a job whilst telling the truth on their CV. <laughs> Interested in hobbies, drinking. <laughs> why do you like this job? So I can pay my bills and get Sky Plus. And why do you think you're good for this job? I'm not. I'm shit both on my own and as part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> A bad primary school teacher, you know. All you've got to do is a bit of a collage and read him a book. But I also remember there was a lot of going to sleep on the on the desk, yeah, where yeah, they yeah. get the entire class. I don't think this happened here, where they get the entire class to mm. put their head on their hands for a long period of time, <laughs> and you just had your head. And they're going, hang on, what was that? What, what was that? A hangover thing? <laughs> was that like you heard this going? I am sick of these asshole kids, right? <laughs> but apparently, it teaches you to deal with incompetence. That's what she's saying. Yeah. Because if you know what incompetence is when you're at primary school. <laughs> You're seven years old. You know, when I was seven, I wanted to be a cat. <laughs> I can't deal with incompetence. You believe anything an adult says. My mate, right, his mum had a lock on a cupboard underneath the stairs. She told him there was a bear under the stairs. <laughs> Whenever he was naughty, she'd get a key out, go towards him, like, ah! <laughs> years later, he finally opened it. He was about 14. He was genuinely going, what if there is a bear? <laughs> Like, it's not a bear, it might be a bear. Yeah. Went in, there wasn't a bear, so you know what he did? It's generally true, right? He got some rope and a bear costume and it made it look like the bear had hung himself <laughs> and then locked the cupboard. Do you know what that is? That is a prank, yes. my friend. <laughs> Good point again, that man. Go to Russell, Zoe and Andy. Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask Hugh to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features Boris Johnson and David Cameron. 
In this, uh, in this time of cuts, I tell you who really should be cut is that, uh, that bloody David Cameron. Completely useless, not, 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 not nearly posh enough. Oh, bollocks. <laughs> the, um, the, uh, I, I, I do hope you didn't hear what I was... Uh, yes, I did, actually, Boris. Try not to uh, walk into that wall. <laughs> More of an idiot than you are. Remember our deal. Try not to say anything for the next four years. Off you go. <laughs> well, I would, I would, but somebody stole my bloody bike. Where's my bike? I left my bike here. The old ball break, you know, the old bone crusher. Where's my bike? Somebody really ought to sort out bike crime in this city. Who, who, who do I talk to? Off you go, Boris. Off you go. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you, too. Incidentally, I've cut your pension by 90%. <laughs> yes, you barely have enough to live on, but remember, we share your pain. I wonder if Samantha's cooked quail for lunch. <laughs> Hang on a second. No, I got on. That was really. I got that right up my crack. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to go over here. I tell you what. I'm tremendous on this thing. I'm like. Uh, I could burn it. Do you see that bloke in the orange? Yeah, I'm going to burn him up that much. Yes, I am. Yes. Like, now I don't need a helmet because a bump on the head would probably do me good. Bloody hell! There's a lot of traffic. Someone should sort that out. Who wants an oyster card? Tell you. Here we go. <laughs> Now we play a round called Who Will Win? Let Paul the Moctopus Decide. <laughs> this game involves Milton, Zoe and Sean, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. Oh, this round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject, please. The first subject is transport. Who wants to come in on that? Sean. <laughs> Um, I have to, I have to get the trains a lot in what I do. Not those trains, they're a bit newer. <laughs> I should point out, but I, I do, I have to get the trains a lot, and uh, it can be difficult on Sundays, this country's Sunday service. Now, for those of you that haven't used the trains on Sundays, I'll explain to you how it works. Basically, you pay for a train... <laughs> ..you get a bus. <laughs> So, sorry, if you can't give me a train, don't give me something shitter. <laughs> get me a helicopter. <laughs> you don't get this with any other form of transport. Imagine. Hi, can I have a taxi, please? Uh, I'm afraid not, but Pete could be rounded a bit to give you a piggyback. <laughs> Remember those old black and white films where the bad guy would, like, tie a woman to a train track, wait for the train to run her over? You wouldn't get that now, would you? It'd be a crap film. Just be some bloke tying a woman to a train track, Standing there like a mug whilst the bus drives past. <laughs> okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is holidays. Who wants to come in on that? Zoe. I always think when it comes to holidays, why go to the effort and expense of going abroad when you can have just as disappointing experience in this country? <laughs> Of course, for the more adventurous, you've got the outdoor holidays, outdoor activities always seem like a good idea. Of course, they rarely are. I think kayaking is an ancient Indian word that means this will be fun for about two minutes. <laughs> I actually went camping last year for the first time in my life. Went camping for five days in England. It rained for five days. <laughs> I didn't get a tan, I got mould. <laughs> From holiday and people go, nice colour. I go, do you like it? That's moss. <laughs> I have grown moss. <laughs> I thought the next time I feel like going camping, I will just stay at home for five days and not have a shit or a shower. <laughs> okay, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what we've been left with. So let's spin the wheel. <laughs> Relationships, Milton. Sometimes I think I should settle down and have a mature relationship, but then I think to myself, it's the middle of the conquer season. <laughs> <laughs> Never give up your seat for a lady. That's how I lost my job as a bus driver. <laughs> I owe my mum. She told me there was a bear living under the stairs. <laughs> My parents came up last weekend, because uh, I keep them in the cellar. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> I don't know who they are. <laughs> a 
I got home from work the other day and my wife was wearing this uh, slinky number, uh, which only really worked when she went downstairs. <laughs> Recently, we bought the box set of Doctor Who and watched it back to back. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't the one facing the screen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sheldon. Boys, there go the man Jones. Pass it down. <laughs> Our next round is called If This Is the Answer, What Is the Question? On the board are six categories. Zoe, which category would you like? Oh, uh, sport. OK, your category is sport. The answer is 15. What is the question? How many times a night does goalkeeper Robert Green wake up screaming? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many inanimate objects has Gaza spoken to today? <laughs> is it if five pieces of fruit a day keep you healthy, how many <laughs> will give you diarrhoea? <laughs> <laughs> is it what age do you have to be to think that the film's twilight are anything other than shit? <laughs> Um, I, I actually think they speak to me. Uh, <laughs> is it how many gallons of oil are now left under the Gulf of Mexico? <laughs> is it how many magic biscuits are there in the magic biscuit tree? <laughs> I'd love that to be the right answer, really. Uh, is it, uh, but, in fact, there are 19 magic biscuits <laughs> in the magic biscuit tree. Is, is it how many minutes a different girl receives a text with a picture of Ashley Cole's knob? <laughs> <laughs> what fact of sunscreen would Dale Winton take with him if he was going on holiday for a week to the centre of the sun? <laughs> 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 what an amazing wish you were here, that would be. <laughs> how many crisps are there in a packet of kettle chips? <laughs> is it how many limbs? <laughs> an amazing argument the other day in Tesco. This woman said to her husband, you've got the wrong crisps. I wanted crisp kettle crisps. What will our neighbours think of us? <laughs> <laughs> How weird is that? Like, someone's going to go around their house and go, Marie's dead to me. Monster monster. <laughs> <laughs> monster monster. Do you say it? Crisp? No one's fussed, That they? would be a top quality mistake if you were sent to buy kettle crisps for a dinner party and you brought back monster munch. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just the same. <laughs> they're shaped like a monster. <laughs> and everything's a cartoon monster. What kind of dinner party do you think I'm trying to throw here? You're not going to like these alpha bites either. <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing with the monster munch is between its toes was where all the flavour was. That was the bit that kind of creeped me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did you discover that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you, 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 you lick the flavour off the crates. What? Who, you don't do that? Well, oh, no. oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the way you do things here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was among royalty now. <laughs> Can Quiet get... time now, Dara. Quiet time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually know the answer to this. How many cards were given during the World Cup final match? Yeah, yeah. right. Well done, Zoe. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, the question I was looking for was how many cards did Howard Webb show during the World Cup final in South Africa? English referee Howard Webb showed a record 15 cards in the final, which is one of the dirtiest, most bad tempered ever. He brandished 14 yells and one red as the Dutch and the Spanish set into each other. You know, when the final whistle uh, blew the World Cup, if you listened, you could hear the sound of women ripping down wall charts. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> back remotes going, yes! <laughs> as men go, our time is over. <laughs> Which lucky punter managed to have a 100% success rate, though? Oh, that would be Paul the Octopus. It would, of course, be Paul the it, Octopus. Uh, it says something about the, uh, the quality of the football at the World Cup, that the star of the World Cup is an octopus, darling. <laughs> <laughs> but given that it is essentially one animal eating another animal, it is an act of... Uh, like, it, it was like, they put lobsters, they put mussels or oysters in? Mussels. And, mussels, and they had to go in and eat the yeah. mussel. I mean, mm. it is essentially no different to had they gone, we've got two goats, yeah. and we've given a flag of Spain on one, and a flag of Germany on the other, now release the lion! <laughs> and the sim <laughs> which everyone Simba carries off, squealing. It would be quite as appealing to watch. Oh, 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 no, no! <laughs> oh, Spain, OK, Grant. <laughs> <Yeah. that's> <laughs> what was fantastic about it, though, was that he got, he predicted that Germany would lose in the semi-final, yeah. and yeah. he got Death threats from Germany, and the Spanish Prime Minister offered him safe haven. He said, 
He said, come to Spain. And I would... Just one word of warning to Paul the Octopus. Paella. <laughs> Paul that... the Octopus actually comes from Weymouth. He's he... one of ours! Oh, he's one oh, of ours! Oh, the thing was, when he was here, he could predict absolutely nothing because <laughs> he wasn't given the right training at a young age. <laughs> so basically, he's a celebrity octopus now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. He's the coolest octopus on the planet. Like, he can go back into the ocean now, and all the female octopuses are going to love him. Yeah. He's just, like this pimp. Yeah. So you can go back here and be like, yo, yo, girls, how are you? How are you? How are you? I want all the actors. <laughs> but the thing is, it's celebrity, so that means like, in, in sort of like ten years' time on ITV4 or something, they'll have after they were famous, and it'll just be a plate of sushi. <laughs> Just him with a fag, predicting scores, uh, <laughs> just, you know, really down, really, really, sounds... really like, Division 4 <laughs> results. Like, you see him outside China White just vomiting on the pavement. <laughs> <laughs> well, three cigarettes on the go, yeah. uh, one of them picking balls out for a lot of Just hanging reason. out with Dean Gaffney. Gaffney's the only one. OK, what have the US been swapping at Russia this week? Oh, spies, darling. Yeah, yeah proper it's all spies. Off. Really yeah. good spies. They were, they were good spies, they were, they were rubbish spies. They were as good at spying as Brian Blessed is at whispering. <laughs> 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 the, uh, so, some of the spies in Russia, they, uh, they had kids, and their kids had no idea yeah. they were spies. And they're living in middle America. Imagine that, from middle America to Russia. Middle America, Hannah Montana, Disney, Russia, Vladimir, the boy that fights the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Needed spies, to be honest. That, with, that is the with, major with, issue. With yeah. Google and Wikipedia, I thought you could just find everything out these days. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I was quite surprised we actually have to go to the effort of <laughs> invisible ink. That's how far it's moved on as well. They were working in invisible I, ink. Yeah. What next? Two cans on a piece of string? Going, <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. from, from the side, from the two cans of a piece of string in a, in a cafe where everyone else is using Wi Fi, yeah. going, why are they using <laughs> string? <laughs> 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 You know when they're using invisible ink, how do they know when their pens run out? <laughs> well, they also, they, didn't they have to... The, there was a code word, and you basically had to go up to somebody and go, excuse me, didn't I meet you last April in Bangkok? And that could be embarrassing if you got the wrong person, couldn't it? <laughs> you know, they're going, oh, did it involve a Coke bottle and some ping-pong balls? <laughs> <laughs> Not you as well, they'll say. <laughs> yeah. They were difficult times. I think you'll find that modern spying no longer works like that. <laughs> well, you're, you're, basing, you're basing this opinion on the one time they asked you to be a spy, aren't you? No, I went yeah. for a spy interview, yeah. And what did they ask you to spy interview? Did it start Well, I they basically went, would you like to be a spy? <laughs> <laughs> How did they come? Did a man walk up to you? Was there a, a letter I got in approached your... by uh, uh, someone at university who said, <laughs> would you be interested in intelligence? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes. I'd like to have some. <laughs> and uh, I, went down, I went down for an interview in London, um, and during this, I decided I didn't really want to be a spy, and I turned it down. That was and your about... final year at uni? Yeah. Well, my final year at uni, um, the highlight of it, um, I lost my football in a hedge, I went into the hedge, and there was a Bristoli man in there going, get your own hedge. <laughs> My, my dream, my crazy dream, is that we find out that after tonight's show, the recording, Hugh goes home and, you know, goes into the house and hangs up his coat and then as he turns on the light and then there's a man just sitting in a chair going, <laughs> it's not a laughing matter, Mr Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's amusing to talk about it now. <laughs> the end of that round, the point's going to Sean Hugh and Milton. OK, now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way to the performance area, please, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, <laughs> here we go. The first subject is bad things to say on a first date. The last time I was in this nightclub, I was still a man. <laughs> <laughs> I've bought some condoms and in preparation, I've got one on already. <laughs> Yes, I know it's only dinner, but unless you sign this prenup, you're not getting any. <laughs> My last what? girlfriend asked if I could play smoke on the water, so I threw a toaster in her bath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So when you put bubbly on the advert, you meant fat. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
You've got good hips. Let me see your teeth. We'll take her. <laughs> Actually, during the day, I'm something really high up in the city. <laughs> well, so anyway, so listen, that's enough about me. Tell me about your sister. <laughs> OK, I did crop my Facebook photo so as you couldn't see my conjoined twin. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! How pissed was I when I asked you out? <laughs> Not as pissed as I was when I said yes! <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I know I'm gonna shag you. Uh, my dating history, yeah. Um, divorce, beheaded, died. <laughs> divorce, beheaded, survived. <laughs> Very good. Okay. The next topic is unlikely lines to hear in a disaster movie. From the makers of Snakes on a Plane come Snails in a Caravan. <laughs> I want you to upload the schematic to my PDA. I, I, I need you to send the, the picture to my mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Ambassador Thrall! Are you telling me that intergalactic war occurred? Because one of your people said, I'm going to the shops, do you want something? And another one replied, yes, get me a galaxy. <laughs> Men, we are heavily surrounded, but don't worry. Gaza has arrived with some chicken and a fishing rod. <laughs> it's one story of terror. It's Bungalow Inferno. <laughs> Listen to me. I want you to take the kids. I want you to go to your mother's. You'll be safe there. I'm going to stay here and shag the nanny. <laughs> the boat is sinking. There's not enough lifeboats. And the worst thing of all, Celine Dion is singing the theme tune. <laughs> there is a house. In New Orleans. <laughs> the Martians landed at around 4 a.m. in Bracknell, went er uh, and left again. <laughs> the ship is sinking. I don't care. I'm a duck. <laughs> yeah, if you just press that, it'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a virus like we have never encountered. 50% of the population will be debilitated completely. The other half will be able to carry on as normal. Gentlemen, this is man flu. <laughs> Do you not realize? If this contagion spreads, the entire X Factor judging panel could be wiped out. And that's the end of the show. This week's winner. Well, I don't know who this week's winners are. Who do you think this week's winners are? <laughs> Should they be? Oh, 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 oh. This week's winners are Annie Parks and Zoe Lyons. The rest of <laughs> Commiserations to Sean Walsh, Hugh Dez, and Milton Jones. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. Check out the new BBC Comedy websites full of exclusive clips from top talent and up-and-coming comedians. And on BBC Three now, South London's favourite geezer, Lee Nelson, with more cheeky comedy. It's well good.